England. I think any time that Ireland play England in any sport, the massive occasion, there's a lot of interest. How would you describe the rivalry between Ireland and England? Um, there's been so many battles over the years. Like I remember as a young fella watching some of the big games, that Crow Park one, uh, some of the ones over in Twickenham, and then in my playing career as well. Over the last few years, we've had some great battles as well. We've come out the right side in the last two or three games, um, but they've always been close and they've gone right down to the last few minutes. Uh, we've had they've had red cards against us in the last couple of games. But even still, like they're a pretty resilient bunch, and they've it's galvanised them maybe in some ways, and it's come down right to the last five ten minutes um, in all the games, and we're expecting the same this weekend. Twickenham is a pretty exciting place to go. Um, you always get a pretty good atmosphere. There's plenty of Irish over in London, so we always get a pretty good home contingent and home following over there as well, uh, and they definitely make themselves heard too. But um, yeah, it's it's obviously a pretty iconic stadium. We get dropped off on the bus kind of in the in the midst of a load of English and some Irish fans and you make a walk down through the stadium so you get a sense of the atmosphere building from an hour or two even pre-kickoff so um, yeah we're ready for that and we're looking forward to it. And who do you think in particular are the danger men for England? Um, I always kind of look at the back rows and my opposite number uh, Ben Earl has been playing very well for them over the last few weeks and We've played together since underage rugby, since under 18s, played against each other, I should say. So I know him pretty well, and he probably knows me pretty well as well. And I've been watching him, obviously, with Saracens in Bristol, and uh, he's someone I rate highly. He's very explosive, carries very well off the base of the scrum, uh, big turnover threat, and is a pretty good all round footballer. So, um, yeah, he's someone who's could potentially cause trouble, and we're going to have to do our best to try and nullify him. Itoje. George Ford controlled the game for them big time. Um, obviously through the line out or through Ford's kicking abilities and putting them in the right area of the field. Um, so they're two people who we're going to have to keep a close eye on as well. And there is an opportunity for Ireland to win the Six Nations Championship on Saturday in Twickenham. What would it mean to you to win another Six Nations? It'd be class. Yeah, it'd be unreal. Um, we actually haven't spoken too much about that. It's been largely on improving our performances from the last few weeks and, and getting better and we are aware obviously what's at stake and what we can do but it's about our performance and we kind of believe if we get that right then the result will look after itself. Just on the performance, Mike Cash was in with us last week for the Viva Field session. You mentioned kind of that you had somehow got away from what you do well in that Wales game. What are you looking to put right this weekend? Yeah, so first of all, our discipline was pretty poor. That kind of stands out. I think we had 14 penalties. And through the competition so far, it hasn't been... It's been traditionally a strength of ours, but yeah, over the last three games, it hasn't been there. I think we've potentially conceded more penalties so far than we did in the whole competition last year. So, um, yeah, we're trying to get back to where we were last year and not giving away silly penalties. I think when you're playing on the edge and you're always looking to play on the edge and cause a bit of trouble at the opposition breakdown or put them under pressure, you're bound to give away a couple, but we need to eliminate the silly ones and there's some that are completely in our control that we're giving away at the minute. So that's one big focus. And then in terms of our attack, um sort of we put a lot of focus and attention into the detail within our shapes and um yeah, some of that took a bit of a backward step and I think it was a good reminder for us going into the last two games that we can't take it for granted even though it's been a big focus area and we understand it well we still need to keep priming it and make sure it's still an area that gets deserved focus and attention just on your own game you're, you're spoken about in the very top bracket of number eights in the world at the moment a what do you put that down to and i suppose b what other number eights in world rugby would you, would you watch and, and really admire yeah um ben earl who we're playing this weekend i think he's top class aldrich for France has been unreal over the last number of years. Uh, Savea is an obvious one. He's probably he was obviously the best player in the world last year and deservedly so. I think he offers so much. Um, I feel there's still a lot of growth in me and a lot of areas for improvement. I think traditionally my strengths have sort of been um, around the ball carry and in attack, and I've tried to get my defensive game up to standard as well. And I think that's grown. But I, I want to keep pushing both areas and. Um, continue to see improvements. Keelan, you spoke about how much you want to improve, but how much more can this Irish squad as a whole improve in the coming weeks? Quite a bit, I think. I think that's what excites us, and um, we've seen growth over the last four year 
cycle and as we start this cycle again it's it's got to continue um yeah the exciting thing is that like we don't know where we can get to but we, we think there's still plenty of room for improvement across all areas which is uh, what we're striving to do and get better in each area what did you learn from last year's grand slam success that you can apply to a potential another grand slam this year um Momentum is huge through the tournament and we've gotten off to a pretty good start in terms of momentum as well. Um, I think there's maybe, we were probably a little bit desperate in that final Grand Slam game against England and definitely didn't play our best rugby. It was pretty tight and scrappy throughout. So uh, sometimes when you want something to happen so much, you can kind of get a little bit desperate and lose your flow. So um, it's about trusting what we do well and um, sort of yeah, trusting that if we if we do things well, the result will look after itself. Okay, then, um, just ask uh, about Brian Bear. What is he like as a person? I mean, he said he's kind of unique. <laughs> uh, yeah, unique is a good word for him. Yeah, he's a great fella. Um, he's kind of quirky in his own way, and he's definitely like we push in this environment um, to be ourselves. He he sort of uh, is definitely himself, which is a good thing. He's a good fella to have around. He's good crack. He comes. I with some pretty strange comments at, at, at times, but uh, um, he watches a lot of American sports and American TV, so he can be very sort of enthusiastic with some one-liners here and there. Like probably enthusiasm or CSI or anything. Uh, more so sports, American yeah. football, and uh, that sort of stuff. Tom Brady esque. Just that, he mentioned Car- Gary Keane as well and the work he's doing. Like, I think Ireland are going in as huge favourites and Twicken probably uh, as heavy as they've ever been favourites. For 150 years now, they've been underdogs and it seems to suit the national psyche. Have you had to do any work on becoming w- w- what you are now? Because it's, it just doesn't sit naturally, uh, like hi- historically, that Ireland would go as maybe 11 point favourites. It could be even more. Is there, what, what sort of work do you have to do to accept or embrace that? Um, I think it comes from having strong belief in in the team, and that comes naturally through results. It's it's not, it's evidence based. Our belief it comes from what we see in each other in training. It comes from the work ethic we see in each other. It comes from the plan the coaches have. It comes from seeing development over the last number of years in each other in us as a team and how we're playing and in the results we've had over the last number of years. So it's. Um, yeah, we definitely believe in ourselves. We believe if we show up and we perform as we're capable of, that we can, we can beat anyone on the day. That's one for Karen. Um, Kevin, can I just ask about Dan Sheen? You kind of both come through the ranks together with Leinster Ireland. Can you just talk about the development you've seen him over the last few years and just his importance to the team now? Yeah, yeah, he's such a good footballer. He's almost like having an eighth back out there at times. Um, he's incredibly powerful and very good feet, very good footwork. Um, his line out and set piece work is probably when he first came onto the scene his scrum was maybe an area that needed improvement and he, he's gotten that to a top class level line out throwing his class obviously scores a lot of tries uh, I think he's what scored the most tries for any hooker in the Six Nations already um, and he, he keeps breaking little milestones here and uh, here and there and making history so between him and Roe and Tom Stewart we've got three top class hookers and yeah, it's exciting to see them push each other and the standard continually improve. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.